that the Senators have played all season long. Can Hammond come up with a big stop? He does. And suddenly, the Senators with a chance to win. Hammond makes the save. Could be one of those nights. Capital, where the home team needs one more run. Not a crazy 15 1 and 1 like the last one. 4 and 1, maybe that might be enough to get it done. Can the Hamburglar extend the magic for one more week? He will face a hungry Steven Stamkos tonight. Six games without a goal. That's a season high for him. As we say hello, friends, and welcome to Canadian Tire Senators Hockey here on TSN. James Duffy alongside Dave Poulin and Bob McKenzie tonight. Here we go. Another one of those high drama scoreboard watching nights with possible outcomes that run the full emotional spectrum. Consider this. Ottawa wins and Boston loses in regulation, and the Sens suddenly control their fate. One point down was still that game in hand. But if it goes the other way, well, then they're five points out, and it's basically over. No teams come back from a five-point deficit this late in the season. So buckle up, try to remain calm, and join Gord Miller and Jamie McClendon. And James Ottawa is still flying high after that shootout win in Detroit on Tuesday night. And, Jimmy, the win was important for the Senators, but so, too, was the way they did it. Yeah, Coach Dave Cameron talked about the structure. And when you have good structure playing that north-south game, then good things will happen. You had one turnover in the neutral zone, an east-west play that ended up in the back of your net. But other than that... The Ottawa Senators played a 65-minute solid game, and it was north-south, and they were able to not only generate chances, but wear down goaltender Peter Mrazek, who was the difference maker. This game would have not gotten to overtime had Mrazek not been outstanding, and the Ottawa Senators stuck with their game plan. They didn't stray from it. They didn't try and do too much. They played that straight-line hockey, and when you play straight-line hockey, Coach Dave Cameron preaches to this group, play within your structure, play north-south, funnel everything towards the net, and good things will happen, and they were able to come out on top in Detroit. A big win. Now we'll see if they can continue that trend against the Tampa Bay Lightning tonight. And the Lightning have won the last two meetings between these two clubs, and Tampa is coming off a poor loss against Toronto on Tuesday night, one when Coach Don Cooper called maybe their worst effort of the season, promising they'll be better tonight. James? Thank you, boys. This is the time of the year and the situation where you need your superstar, your captain, to lead, to maybe carry you. You like what you're seeing from Carlson so far? I really like what I'm seeing, and we, we have seen it on the ice all year long. Back back to back 20 goal seasons. He's been a terrific leader on the ice. But through a furious stretch here, they had such a great run. And then a little dip in the schedule where they lost three games. He chose after Florida's loss on Sunday to call out his teammates and say, we need more. We need it now. There's six games left. I love the timing of this. I like the little dip of three games, him addressing the situation, and now they're ready to go. Here is the exact situation. You know it well. It is Ottawa trailing by three points but Bob still with that game in hand they have Tampa home to Washington in Toronto home to Pitt in New York against the Rangers uh, Boston's in Detroit tonight home at Toronto in Washington and in Florida you can watch the standings all you want you can watch the scoreboard all you want it's imperative that Ottawa wins you talked about you can't fall behind five points to either Boston or Detroit at this time of the year but the interesting thing is even if Boston wins tonight and Ottawa were to win you also have the Detroit Red Wings as a target to go after. So it wouldn't just be chasing after the Boston Bruins. So Detroit's looking over the shoulder at Boston. Boston's been looking over the shoulder at Ottawa. Detroit might have to look over their shoulder if Ottawa wins tonight, and Boston does too. A little sidebar story to tonight. Slater Cuckoo of the Tampa Bay Lightning, Ottawa native, is second NHL game, and of course his first in front of the hometown fans and lots of family. He spoke to Brent Wallace as he arrived at the rink. So let's first talk about your game here and what is arguably your hometown, your thoughts going into tonight. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, lots of family and friends coming and 
you know, hopefully I'll play well and uh, hopefully the Tampa Bay Lightning will win. You grew up a Leafs fan, so you'll probably get a little bit more attention here tonight as fans may look to boo you, but your thoughts on playing your first game, which is in Toronto? Uh, it was amazing. It was uh, everything I could have hoped for. And, um, you know, I was lucky to have my family there and, uh, you know, lucky that I got the call. What will be more nervous to play this game or play the first game? Uh, I'm not sure. I guess I'll uh, see when I get out there. Um, but Toronto was a pretty special moment. Thanks very much. Thank you. Another guy Ottawa needs, Mika Zibanejad, had that one two goal game, but in the other 12 over the last 13, nothing. So he's mixed things up, cut his hair a little bit, shaved. Hopefully that will get the mojo going for Mika and the Sens tonight. Canadian Tire Senators Hockey on TSN is brought to you by Bell. Hockey just got better by Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Ottawa Senators, and by Scotiabank. You're richer than you think. Scotiabank. Back here in Ottawa, it is the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Ottawa Senators on a crucial Thursday night as the NHL's regular season has but nine days remaining, and Ottawa continues its unlikely bid for a playoff spot in the Eastern Conference. Starting goalies are brought to you by Scotiabank. You're richer than you think. Andrew Hammond can become the first goaltender in National Hockey League history to win 16 of his first 18 starts. He begins to win tonight. Former Senator Ben Bishop, who was traded away for Corey Conacher, is 6-0-2 against his former team. A slump, six games on a goal, qualifies for that in Steve Stamkos' book, Jamie. That makes him a very dangerous player. We know how hard he competes on the puck. He wants to be a difference maker, and that'll be the challenge for the Ottawa Senators. Not only get two big points, but find a way to shut down Steven Stamkos, who is hungry for some goals and to get on the board. Vladislav Nemesnikov faces off against Jean-Gabriel Pajot, and quickly the puck goes ahead to Curtis Lazar. Lazar shoots, and he fires it wide. Pajo back to the point. Mark Mathot with a drive, and Bishop steers that away. Bishop got the win for Tampa in Montreal on Monday night when the Lightning clinched the playoff spot. As Eric Condra swings back and plays it back for Mathot. Tampa, with this lineup tonight, is the youngest team in the NHL. <laughs> That's pretty impressive, Gord, considering the talent level they, they have. They score the most goals in the National Hockey League, and that just means they're set for many years to come. 14 of their players, including this man, Andre Palat, are homegrown, either drafted or, or college free agents. Tonight's case of the game are brought to you by Tim Hortons, official copy of the NHL. Well, the Tampa Bay Lightning use their skating game. They've got tremendous speed, and they obviously, obviously can finish because they are the top scoring team in the National Hockey League. So the Senators have to be aware of that. If you're the Ottawa Senators, don't change a thing. Take the 10 plate from the Detroit game and apply it right in this game. Play a solid 60 minutes, play north-south hockey, simple hockey, put the pucks towards the net and good things will happen. Matt Carl goes back for his Mark MacArthur steps into him. Here's Stan goes quickly for Valtteri Filpula. Lightning without Tyler Johnson up front tonight and four regular defensemen are out, including Victor Hedman, who is day-to-day, -day, but also out Jason Garrison and Braden Coburn, who are expected to be two of their top 4D in the playoff. That's a big challenge for John Cooper. Coach John Cooper and his crew is you've got some inexperience on the back end. Obviously, less talent, tougher to move the puck to that high-scoring forward group. So we'll have to see if Ottawa is the pressure point is forecheck the younger D. Here's Filpola back with it. The former Detroit Red Wing plays it across to Nikita Nesterov. It was a fifth round pick in 2011. Tampa's top three picks that year were all Russians. Then their first round pick the next year, Andre Vasilevsky, also a Russian. They've got four of them playing regularly in their lineup. And all of them are going to be very quality players. I would dare say star in the league, especially Vasilevsky. I'm a big fan of his. He's going to be an elite starter in the National Hockey League. It's just to be a matter of time and experience for him. Now Zach Smith comes busting in for Ottawa, knocked away from him by Brian Boyle. And Cody Cece fires it down to Bishop and leaves it there for Nesterov. Ben Bishop was with Ottawa for parts of two seasons, basically from one trade deadline to the next. And worth pointing out that with two assists against Montreal on Monday night, Ben Bishop has more points this year than the man he was traded for, Corey Conacher. Conacher is struggling to stay in the league, and 
guy like Ben Bishop, finalist for the Vesna last year, tallest goaltender in the National Hockey League at six foot eight, handles the puck extremely well. That is a challenge for the Senators as well. Be smart on their dump-ins because Bishop not shy to get out and make a direct pass to help exit the zone. And Brian Boyle, who's six foot seven, wins that face-off for Tampa. They broke up the big uniforms in T-Bay. He comes out, she is so taking a shot away. And the puck loose in the corner for Mark Barbario, taken away from him by Chiasson, who keeps battling for it. Alex Chiasson. Fields on Cedric Paquette, and stays with it. Drops it down for Hoffman. Mike Hoffman, a long shot that drifted high and wide with David Legwan screening in front. Now Legwan back on it. Plays it back to Mathot. Brings it across to Carlson, a long wrist shot, went off a stick. Legwan can't find it. Chiasson trying to reach it. Carlson back, whips it across, but the pass draws Mathot out. Good work by the Ottawa Senators to get net front presence in front of Ben Bishop trying to create havoc. Oh, what a move by Carlson to the line. Got around Lukowski and shoots with it high and wide. Here's Lazar back on it. Rink wide, he goes for Carlson, spins and shoots. It's knocked away from him by Witkowski. And Barbario plays it back out to the Sen zone. Good pressure by Ottawa in the early going. And now Lazar with it. Try to bank that ahead, but the puck went into the Ottawa bench and play is called with three and a half gone in the first period. I talked about Alex Chieson getting to that blue paint, trying to create a little bit of a screen. Hoffman's just going to throw it towards the net. That's David Leguan. Making it tough for Ben Bishop and then Carlson with an outstanding little curl and drag play. Creates some ice for himself and get it down. It ends up going over top of the net on Ben Bishop. But you see the skill level of Carlson to pull moves like that when he's the last guy back. He's having an outstanding season, especially he's been such an impact player the last couple months. Pajot won that face off for Ottawa, but he'll have to go back and do it again as the Sens are called for icing. We continue with Eric Carlson. I mean, what he's been able to do, everyone attributes to how his season really took off when Mark Mathot came into the lineup, but I would argue Carlson's been outstanding all season long, but it's just tough when you're not getting the production, maybe from a point standpoint, but this defensive game has been a lot stronger than people think. Puck loose along the boards, Palat picks it up. Now to Kucherov, Nikita Kucherov had that batted away. Kucherov a second round pick in that 2011 draft for the Lightning. Now Palat swings it across for Kucherov. Swings inside the blue line. Kucherov just missed there by Kondrup. Drops it back down to us. Coleman fires it back and there's a chance for Kucherov. Turned away by Hammond. Point blank. What a stop by Andrew Hammond. You're right, Gord. What an outstanding right pad save by Andrew Hammond. He read it well. In comes Kucherov now on Borowiecki. And Palat tied up by Kondrup. Lightning have 10 more 5-on-5 five five goals than any other National Hockey League team. Well, they're highly skilled, and, and a guy like on the back end, Anton Stroman makes that play possible. Here's Slater Cuckoo with it now, the Winchester, Ontario native from just outside the Ottawa area. Tons of friends and family here tonight. In fact, his parents are sitting right behind the penalty box. He's hoping he doesn't get too close to them tonight. Terrace. For that return pass from the stone, but Matt Carl knocked it away. In comes Carl across the line, drops it off for Stamkos. His rink wide pass missed. And now the lead pass goes to MacArthur, one on one with Nesterov. MacArthur peels back, buys some time, and drops it down to Turris. Turris a long wrist shot, pass, and he won't score. Mark Stone goes out of the way. a simple shot thrown towards the net by Kyle Turris and the rebound comes off of Ben Bishop's left pad but MacArthur's going to pull back little pop play here now Turris is going to throw it towards the net Bishop tough time tracking it CeCe's driving the net and Stone gets the big rebound you see him track into that lane Puck goes by Cody CeCe Stone gets the rebound and elevates it and the Ottawa Senators are on the board. And they'll save that puck for Mark Stone. That's 20 goals on the year for him. And Stone, since mid-December, has been a modern consistent team for the Senators. He has not gone more than five games without scoring a goal for Ottawa. So we have the shootout winner against Detroit on Tuesday night. And now the opening goal here in a crucial game against Tampa at home. A 
Bounces down to Hammond, and here's Carlson with it. Leg lock. Looks ahead for Sheasaw. Teresa MacArthur draw the assists on the goal by Mark Stone at 5.03. Now fired in by Paquette. And Hammond out to play at the NHL Player of the Month for March. Carlson ahead to Zibanejad. And Mika Zibanejad here cutting the shade, trying to change his luck a little bit. He's done that a number of times this year. He's got a long beard, short hair. Long hair, short beard. He's tried everything. Just change the look around a little bit. Maybe try and alter the luck of his game. And in comes Bobby Ryan, also trying to bust out of a slump. The puck roll off his stick, and JT Brown's got it. Now picked off by the Senators. And a long shot by Wierkosh. That goes just wide. Now Boyle with it. Zibanejad ties him up. Six and a half gone in the opening period. All over one nothing lead. Out shooting Tampa, five to two. Some terrific work in the offensive zone there and started with Zibanejad getting the puck back to the point. Now Lazar takes the puck away from Boyle. Weirkosh ahead to CeCe. And the crowd urging on along. CeCe shoots it, goes off a stick, gets it right back. CeCe with a chance, setting the loose puck. Reaching for it was Pajot, couldn't quite get there. And it's lifted out by Brown. Great early pace here in the opening period. Wormieski to Pajot. This is no slouch that Ottawa is taking on right. Tampa battling for first place in the Atlantic. Now Bishop is down, and Bishop is on top of Pajot and giving him the business. As referee Jiz Lion Bear jumps in quickly. Well, Bishop didn't like the fact that Pajot didn't ease up while driving to the net, and he runs into him. That's a, a mismatch in size, but certainly not in heart. The 5-9 Pajo taking on the 6-8 Bishop. But Mark Stone with a smile as the Ottawa Senators have a 1-0 lead on his 20th goal of the year. John Gabriel Pajot getting after Ben Bishop early on as Bishop takes a little swipe at him. And then Pajot not easing up as he goes hard to the net. And ben Bishop handing out the, the waffle going after him. So there is a little bit of a history there, Gore, that... And we talked about the, the mismatch in size, but Pajot, he plays that feisty style. He's not going to give up size or anything to anybody. Face off one by Turris. Auto on the power play as Carlson plays it back for Weirkosh. Across for Turris with a drive. Strowman down the way. And now Matthew Carl. Trying to clear it out and couldn't. Here's Carlson with it. Plays it back to Weirkosh. To Carlson. Stone standing in front. Carlson winds in, waits and shoots. It got through Stone with a chance of the rebound. Turned away by Bishop. And it's fired down the ice by Boyle. Good work on the power play. Kick it wide. And then Carlson just gets it to the net. Coach Dave Cameron has talked about that and preached to his group. Get it down to the blue paint and hammer it away. Stone gets a good look at it. Now Stone in for McCarthy, but the play's a half step offside at the Tampa line. Talk about Mark Stone in front here. Carlson just tries to get it through and find a lane. Stone pops out and is able to jam away that rebound. Ben Bishop's a big guy. Goes into that butterfly move. Save and then can't cor corral the rebound. Makes a good save on Mark Stone. If, if Stone elevates that, may have an opportunity for a, a second goal on the, on the power play. Leguan, who leads Ottawa with six power play goals on the year, slides it back. Remarkable that Legua has only nine goals on the season, but leads his team in power play goals. Ryan drops it back to Carlson. Back to Bobby Ryan in the corner. Bounced off his skate for an open wing. And Luke Witkowski tried to play it out. Held by Legua at the line. Now racing to it is Barbario, who fires it down the ice. In Detroit the other night, they had some good looks on the power play, but Morazic was the difference, and so far they've had one good look. Ryan drops it back to Carlson. 40 seconds to go on the power play. Carlson drops it back for Ryan. And he comes, he fires. Bishop makes the stop. And this time there is no rebound. Urban Attitudes from Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Live life comfortably. Bobby Ryan's going to get the puck on the wall. Step for a better lane. Trying again, get it to the net, and 
Ben Bishop makes a good save and he's able to corral the rebound. Off the draw, Carlson, or Carl rather. Put that wide of the goal now. Carlson with it back at the point. Eric Carlson across the weird Kaja drive and Bishop fights it off. The rebound actually hit the official. And as that struck Eric Furman out of high, and now Boyle with a chance shorthanded. In comes Boyle on Carlson. And Boyle spins and fires it wide. Carl plays it back to Witkowski. Luke Witkowski drafted in June of 2000. Eight by the Lightning made his NHL debut six and a half years later after four years of college and two full years in the American League. Certainly a long path to the National Hockey League, but wait, this is his 13th game so far this season. They had a chance with the injuries on the Tampa Blue Line. Remember last year, Tampa lost Ben Bishop right at the end of the regular season. Well, getting swept by Montreal in the first round. There's Palat with it. Trying to play it back with Wieskowski. Tampa got Montreal back this year, swept the season series, winning all five games, and also took all three from the New York Rangers. So there's two of the best teams in the Eastern Conference, and the Lightning are 8-0 against them. Well, right now the challenge is their depth is getting challenged because of the injuries on the back end, and you hope they get healthy heading into the playoffs, because you're right, Lord, Ben Bishop was a difference maker, and Lindback was playing dodgeball in the playoffs last year, and didn't work out so well for the Lightning. Domestikov across for Kucherov. Gina Kucherov, who played in the Quebec Major Junior League for Ren Miranda. Lost the handle. Condra to the line, but Cuckoo knocks it down. And Cuckoo with a quick shot for rebound. Tap wide by Palat. Later, Cuckoo played 15 and a half minutes in his NHL debut in Toronto on Tuesday night. Here's Carl with it. That shot partially blocked by Lazar, who's checking his stick. Now Kucherov taking it down. No penalty on the play. And Panjo lost the puck to Carl. Now Cuckoo. Knocked down by Condra, the long shot from Carl, steered away by Hammond. In comes Carl with it now. Sign of the goal, drops it down, Paquette taps it wide. And finally Condra plays the puck down to the Tampa zone. And icing waves off as Stamkos goes back, whips that pass ahead for Killorn. Penalty coming to Ottawa. And Glava back to touch it. And with 9.02 to go in the opening period, the Tampa Bay Lightning will get the game's first power play as Eric Condra goes off for that. Andrew Hammond has been a rock for the Ottawa Senators and makes a massive save early on. Anton Strauman takes some ice and to throw it to Kucherov in front and Hammond gets the right pad across, takes away that lower part of the net, but he reads the play so well and guess what happens right after that save? They go down and score, and you know, talk about his effect on this team and the confidence they're playing in front of him speaks for itself with the numbers there. On the tap of power play, Filippo wins the draw, the pass missed him, and Borbietsky fires it down. The Lightning may be the highest scoring team in the NHL, but their power play really struggles, ranked 19th in the NHL at 18%. What's well, amazing with the, the skills level out there, if everyone's healthy, you know, you add in guys like Hedman and Garrison on the back end, but you'd have to think they miss a guy on the half ball like Marty St. Louis. He's pretty tough to replace, and you have other guys giving Stamkos the puck. Jonathan Drouin scored against Montreal on Monday night. Plays it back to Anton Strauman, back for Drouin. He's it up and fires, partially blocked by Borbietsky. Rebound. Stamkos reaching for it. The puck is stuck on the side of the net. And Borbietsky had that puck take a bite out, of, bite out of him, and he's limping back to the Ottawa bench. When Andrew Hammond gets tied up and falls down, and the puck's going to go wide, and Stamkos tries to bank it off him. Simple shot's going to be kicked wide. Bouncing puck. You see Hammond get tied up with his stick in front with Eric Greiber, and Stamkos backhands it towards him. A lot of times you see the stick get caught. He has the presence of mind to let the stick go and spin around to try and get to that post and seal it. Stamkos tries to bank it off of him, and Borbietsky does a good job of getting the whistle. 105 to go in the Tampa power play. Nesterov for Palat in full stride. Drops it back to Ryan Callahan, who scored in the power play against Toronto on Tuesday night. The Lightning's only goal in that game. Palat plays it back for Nesterov. Back to Palat. With Callahan staying at the side of the goal, who now takes that pass. Ryan Callahan, the man the Lightning got for Martin San Luis, centering pass, and Domestikov chips that up and out of play. 
Canadian Tire Senators Hockey on TSN is brought to you by Toyota's Red Tag Days. Hurry into your local Toyota dealer for great offers on many 2015 models. Lovietsky well, back out for Ottawa after being hit by that shot in his last shift. By the way, the Lightning didn't just get Ryan Callahan for Martin San Luis. They got a first round pick and a conditional second. And because the Rangers went to the Stanley Cup final last year, that second became a first. So two first round picks and Ryan Callahan for Martin San Luis. Steve Eiserman continues to impress as a general manager. And the way he's been able to build this team, it's, it's amazing. Callahan finds Blatt in front, shoots. He whistled that wide. And the puck bounced off the dasher, up and out of play with 20 seconds to go in the Condra penalty. We didn't miss by much. Puck's going to come right to the middle. Blatt's going to throw it back to the point. Now back into the middle, and you see a lot of traffic, and he identifies that. He goes blocker side on Hammond. Hammond tries to track the puck, ends up just missing the net and going over the boards. But good presence of mind to use the screen in front. Al Stralman with it. Plays it across the stamp goes for the drive, saved by Hammond. Stamp goes trying to play it across. And all teed up for that shot was Nestor off of the lightning, but it was picked off by Pajot. That was a great read by Pajot with the fake shot by Stamkos to try and come back through the seam. Now Anton Strawman winds his way in. Borowiecki stays with him. And a huge hit in the corner as Strawman is built in there by Borowiecki. Teams are back to five on five under seven to go. And now Griba hammers down Kalorn. Brought in by Zibanejad. He finds Ryan who spins back in the corner. Feeds it back to Mathot. Mathot to Ryan. It skipped off his stick. Kupala with it. It's all Kupala. Plays it across. For Nesterov. Kalorn. With time finds Kupala. Zach Smith stepped into him and takes him down. And now Mathot plays it back up to center ice. 9 4. The shot's on goal for Ottawa. Zabana dead to Carlson. And his pocket kick by Nesterov. And back cover lightning. Drew and quickly ahead for Callahan. Ryan Callahan works on Mathot. Shoot! Hammond makes a stop on him. That was a really good save by Hammond as Callahan used Mark Mathot as a screen. Now Cuckoo played it ahead, finds Callahan with it. Cuckoo certainly wasn't shy in his National Hockey League debut on Tuesday night. He's known as a strong skating offensive defenseman. Long shot right on Hammond makes the save there on Carl. And Shia Song plays it back up to center right. Smith gathers up a loose puck for Ottawa. Squeeze that by Paquette back down to the Tampa zone. What a pace here in the first period. We're going to penalty coming in behind the play right in front of you, Jamie. Callahan got tangled up with Smith in front of the two benches. And Eric Furlat's going to call penalty and maybe two here. A little dust up right in front of me and Callahan doesn't back down. Smith gives him a little chin music and they're both going to go. So back and forth they go, and to the penalty box they go, late in the first. Mark Stone scored the shootout winner for the Ottawa Senators on Tuesday night in Detroit, and was also involved in this unfortunate incident off the faceoff where his stick, or his skate rather, clipped Drew Miller of the Red Wings in the face and cut Miller for more than 60 stitches. It was a nasty looking gash. Guess what? Tonight, in the game against Boston, Drew Miller is back in the lineup for Detroit, playing in his 159th consecutive game. It's so amazing. He, very fortunate that he didn't have any massive damage to the eye. I mean, yes, you've got the laceration that we fixed with stitches, but tough character coming back two days later, and that was very scary live. We, uh, we covered it, and you knew right away. You could see the blood on the ice, and he popped right up and skated right to the bench. He knew he was in some distress, and... The whole building was silent. Even Mark Stone was looking over, and obviously that's when the human factor kicks in from the competition, and the whole league is glad that Drew Miller's doing well and able to play tonight. Remember Steve Duchesne losing nine teeth in a playoff game in Detroit one night. Came back and played the next game, and Scotty Bowman said, well, you don't play with your teeth. What's the big deal? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that sounds like Scotty Bowman. <laughs> Here's Carlson with a long wrist shot down to Bishop. And Ben Bishop able to hang on to that. Well, the pace of this game has been outstanding from an Ottawa perspective. Regardless of the penalty or not, it's like they just picked up right where they left off. And when they're moving their feet, that's when they're so effective. And we'll see how 
things work on a four-on-four -four situation as Tampa has tremendous skill out there as well. Ottawa coach Dave Cameron was worried about fatigue, both physical and mental after all these important games. Carlson shoots right on, and Bishop makes a stop. Cameron gave his team the day off yesterday. But with so many of the young Ottawa players in this situation for the first time, just the mental grind of playing him night after night, crucial games for your season. Well, you're right. These are playoff games right now. You are playing for the playoffs, but when it's every second day, you've got to find a way to call on it, especially pop days. Carlson loses the handle. Filpola gets in behind him. Valtteri Filpola into that game. Shot him and makes the stop. Filpola fighting off Eric Carlson. And Andrew Hammond makes a terrific save on the partial breakaway. That's a turnover. Eric Carlson sticks with it. And Philpola knows that he's got back pressure. Just a, a rolling puck. Carlson wants to take a better lane for himself. You see Philpola using his body, takes it to the back end and fights to get into position. And Andrew Hammond gets enough of it. But he has the smarts to know that it's caught in that body. And he's ended up moving laterally from right to left. He's able to keep it out. That's a big save. Your goaltender bails your top player out. The other good part of that was Carlson didn't take a penalty coming back. Which likely would have been a penalty shot. Now it's a bandage jam. Takes the return pass. The backhand shot stopped by Bishop. The bandage jam back with it. Plays it back to Weirkosh with a four on four. And Zibanejad kicks it back out. Nesterov can't clear it away. Hoffman a backhander, and that's knocked away by Bishop. Four and a half to go here in period number one. Ottawa with a one nothing lead on Mark Stone's 20th of the year. Nesterov and Kucherov. The centering pass knocked down by CeCe. That's the third time in this first period, Jamie, that an Ottawa defender has knocked the puck away from the Tampa player who would have been in alone. Really good work, Jordan. As you pointed out, it's just collapsing back to the middle and having terrific sticks. and. So the last so play, Mika Zibanejad's going to get a, a terrific chance, a little stop-up play to pop it down low to Hoffman and then jump into a lane. And he takes it on forehand, backhand, and Ben Bishop does a pretty good job of sealing that post. It's a nice little give-and-go play by two young players down low. Boy, Zibanejad looking a lot younger. Yeah, he's 21 without the beard. <laughs> Faceoff wasn't done fairly with 36 seconds to go in the four on four. Zibanej had two goals in his last 13 games. I don't mind the lack of production if you're creating chances. And here, last play, he got an opportunity to get to the net. He's been more physical and he's been more consistent. It's just got to find a way to find the back of the net. And that gains a lot of confidence, not only for the group, but obviously helps on the scoreboard. Look at Slater Cuckoo jumping into the rush as Kalorn brings it in. Now Cuckoo retreats. Takes that rink wide pass, shoots, Hammond makes the stop, rebound, loose in front, Kalorn had it knocked away by Mathot. Knocked down the line by Stroman. Anton Stroman drops it back, Drew Amp finds Cuckoo, shoots again. That was blocked, and we've got a penalty in front. As Kalorn was being held by Carlson, who does take a penalty this time, and so Tampa will get a late power play here in the first period. Eric Carlson's going to get a holding penalty as he argues it. It's going to be a physical battle in front. Stroman does a terrific job of keeping the puck in. Down the wall. Now it's going to get back to the point. You see Carlson right there with the right arm turning Kalorn around. The referee's in good position to make that call, but anytime you get that hand inside the body and physically turn somebody, you're going to get that call. We'll see if the Senators can kill that off. Four on three for the next 12 seconds. Stroman plays it across to Filpola. Back to Strom with the pass missed him, and it's back down to the Tampa zone. Still no score in the first period in Detroit. Red Wings out shooting Boston badly in that game, but zeros across the board. Phil Pilot trying to turn Grima around. Grima stays with him. Now it's five on four for a minute and a half. And racing to it is Pajo. To the line, not quite out. The puck bounces around. Phil Pilot knocks it down. And Pajo taking Lumberjack swings at him. Plays it to the line, but not out again. Strawman for Druin. In shoots scores! Jonathan Druin, power play goal. The game is tied at one. This is going to be a lost battle on the wall. He pushed the puck up, but it's kept in, and then it's going to be kicked wide. And it's a two on one situation for Jonathan Druin to walk downtown. Pajo is flushing the puck up. Eric Ryba is going to get. 
pulled up into that play as well. But what happens? You get three guys in that situation, Condra in a defensive posture, but the puck's going to go wide, and now you're on the wrong side of the puck. It's a two-on-one situation. Drew Ann uses Killorn as a, a decoy on the back door. Orbietsky has to play that pass. And Drew Ann is able to beat Andrew Hammond top shelf with a really nice shot, but you've got to find a way when it's that close to the blue line. You've got three players' strength up at that blue line to get that puck out and it cost you a goal. Jonathan Drew out with two goals now in his last three games. Hadn't scored in his previous 42. Now a turnover and Brendan Morrow fires that wide. JT Brown on it. Morrow comes in for it. Morrow, the 15-year veteran. Makes a return pass from Matt Carl across to Cuckoo. Later, Cuckoo trying to bank it down for Brown. Weirkosh picks it up. And again, the puck held to the line by the Lightning. Shots are 14 to 9, Ottawa. Strawman and Philpott draw the assists on the power play goal by Drouin. As Turris comes in and shoots, Bishop makes the save up high. Drouin with four goals on the year, all four scored on the road. Third overall pick of the 2013 NHL draft. And now Brown with a chance that bounced away from him. Ottawa getting sloppy here late in this first period. Delayed penalty here, Gordon. Turris took a, a high stick and Tampa's going to go to the box. So Barbario touches up, but with 2.04 to go in the opening period, Ottawa will get its second power play of the game. Brendan Morrow is going to get the gate. Physical battle on the wall. He's going to pop down low, and Morrow's just going to get a stick. He recklessly swings it, and Turris is in the lane. and. Takes it right across the visor. No blood on Turris, so it's a two-minute high-sticking penalty with 2.04 left in the first period. John Cooper, the Tampa coach, was the head coach of the American League affiliate, the one that he called a cup championship in 2011. As Leglon walks in and fires, it ramps off a stick. That team, Jamie, won 28 consecutive games. Not undefeated 28, they won 28 in a row. Cooper was the American League coach of the year that year. Name of Prince George, B.C., who's kind of wound his way across North America, coached to the USHL in Detroit and St. Louis. Then the American League. Zibanejad swings it across. Was shot by Carlson, was blocked, and sent down the ice by Palat. That was a great play by Zibanejad to get it to Carlson. It kind of handcuffed him, and he didn't get all of it. As Ben Bishop bit on it, there was a clear lane to, to find the net if Carlson would have had a clear shot. Now they shoot it, pin balls around. Zibanejad reaching for it. 90 seconds to go in the period. Ottawa had four shots on its first power play. As Hammond is back to play, leave it there for Carlson. Carlson ahead for Turris. That bounced away from him. Now Turris has to race back with Boyle all over him. Now Carlson in across the line, trying to flip that ahead for MacArthur. That's broken up. And flip back down the ice by Carl. You can clearly see Tampa's focus is to take away Eric Carlson. Every time he gets to the puck, they're trying to limit time and space, limit his lanes. They know everything. All the offense drives through Carlson. First period over in Detroit. No score between the Bruins and Red Wings. Here's Carlson with it. Wraps it around. 45 seconds to go in the period. Stone drops it back for Turris. He finds Hoffman with time along wrist shot. That was blocked by Boyle. That stunned Brian Boyle. Hit him on the left hand, and Boyle's making his way to the Tampa bench. Such a big guy and gets in the lane, pays a price. And when you're that big, you either have to block the shot or get out of the way because there's no chance for the goaltender to track it to the point. Now Hoffman works it back in. Centers of the count on the one time. Stone shoots in the goal post. Mark Stone with a great chance in the final second of the power play. Rings it off the pipe. Now Torres plays it back. Carlson a drive, and it's Strawman. Hoffman in with time. And Hoffman still to try to feed it back for McCarthy. That's broken up, but a centering pass misses Torres. Mike Hoffman had a lane towards the net. He actually could have shot that. Takes an extra step and doesn't get a shot on goal. Oh, what a chance though for Ottawa in the late stages. Mark Stone, who had Ottawa's goal to open the scoring earlier in the first period, with a great chance here. Buck's going to kick wide, and you can see Ben Bishop struggles to get across, and Stone's going to just a little chip shot that ends up hitting the post and going out the other way. And Bishop gets a fortunate bounce at the end of that period. So Stone with his 20th, and Ottawa comes back with one to equalize it. 
And it's 1-1 after 20 minutes as we get set for our first intermission. All right, thank you, Gord. James Duffy back with you. Dave Poulin and Bob McKenzie alongside to talk about Stone and the Sens' good start and the kind of slacker finish to that period. Plus, we'll update you on the Red Wings and the Bruins still awaiting the first goal in that one. Back in Ottawa, here is your first period scoring summary brought to you by your Metro Ottawa Ford dealers. Mark Stone with his 20th of the year at 5.03, the Jonathan Drouin. His fourth of the season on the power play at 16.53. Ottawa outshoots Tampa by a count of 15 to 9. Back here with Jamie McLennan on Tuesday night, Ottawa outshot the Detroit Red Wings by a 34-17 margin. That was the first time with Mike Babcock as the coach that Detroit was outshot by a 2-1 margin at home, and that trend is continuing tonight. Yes, for 15 first period shots for the Ottawa Senators. 11 five on five shots. They were the better team five on five. Coach Dave Cameron had preached, stick with your game plan, get pucks towards the net, get traffic, and get on the forecheck and use your skating game. And that's exactly what the Senators were able to do in their own building, dictate the pace, get that defensive core that is banged up with the Tampa Bay Lightning back on their heels. They did a very good job of not only getting pucks to the net, but forcing Ben Bishop to make some tough saves. And he got a 1-1 game. He's got to continue on with that trend here in the second period. And the teams begin the second period. Five on five as Kajo goes in on Palat. Curtis Lazar picks up the loose puck streaking in. Lazar with time in the corner. Try to center it. Barbario got it. Now Lazar back with it. Puts it back for Kajo at the line is Carlson. Now Lazar battling with Palat. Kicks it out there for Kajo with a sharp angle shot. And Ben Bishop makes the stop 30 seconds into the period. Post or tweet your photos to hashtag Samsung Sens fan, like this lucky fan did for your chance to win fabulous prizes courtesy of Samsung. You need to continue to get pucks at Ben Bishop. I noticed he had a couple rebound issues in the first period. Obviously, Mark Stone got the goal off of a, a big rebound off the Kyle Turris offering. and. That's the scouting report on him. He's a first shot goaltender and the second shot to get into a little bit of trouble because of that lateral movement. He's so big, it takes him a little bit to, to recover for that second shot. Later, Cuckoo fires it down the ice. It's an icing call against the Lightning, who are battling Montreal for the top spot in the Atlantic Division. But right now, if the playoffs began, it would be Tampa against Detroit. That would be Steve Eiserman leading the Lightning into a playoff series against his old franchise. It'd be tough for him because not only does he have friends in that organization, but he knows how they work, so it may work to his advantage. He could free scout pretty well. Are there any secrets anymore, really? A couple, not too many, though. Here's Hoffman, spins that back in the corner. Chiazong goes looking for it. Someone's minus a glove out there. It's Slater Cuckoo, that's a... Scary feeling being out there without a glove on. Quickly retrieves that as Weirkoff plays the puck across to CC. Back goes Carl for it. Through the middle, he finds JT Brown back for Brendan Morrow. Ball for Boyle. Tampa, the best five on five team in the league this season. But the Lightning got shut out by Detroit last week. It is Ottawa is the only team left in the league that has not been shut out. It's an interesting stat considering Tampa is such a high-scoring team, but you know, Ottawa continues to, to work their way up the charts scoring-wise. In comes Stamkos with it now, takes the return pass from Kalorn, centers it, Hammond makes the stop, Kalorn can't quite get to the rebound as he was sweeping behind the goal. And that shot by Nesterov was blocked, Kalorn plays it back in the corner, Driva jousting in there with Stamkos. Sam goes to centering pass, taken away by Stone, who quickly slides that back out to center ice. MacArthur, ahead for Turris, drops it back to MacArthur. Ottawa's changing MacArthur, one hands that across to Griba. That pass missed Turris. And now Borbieski chips it back in deep. Anton Strawman batting with MacArthur, wins it. And Stam goes, lets the puck ahead to Kalorn. We're talking about the best free agent signings in the NHL this year. Anton Strawman might be on your list. Nine goals on defense for the Lightning. 
I would agree with that, Gord. He's been outstanding for the Lightning. And now Paquette walks in and shoots. He rang that off the pipe. See, post a stone hit at the end of the first period. Now Callahan plays it back to Witkowski with a drive, and that went by a screen hammer who never saw it. Callahan plays it back for Witkowski. Held by Barbario, who shoots, and Brava got a skate on that. Now Zibanejad back with it, three on two for Ottawa. Zibanejad for Ryan, who lost the handle for a moment. And Zibanejad got it back. The cat, Barry Smith, a penalty coming now to the Lightning. So Ottawa will get a power play here. Three minutes and 13 seconds into the second period. Zach Smith's gonna get buried behind the net. Ket's gonna get a boarding call here. Smith's got his back to the play, and he's in that four-foot area. He braces himself, but Paquette just runs right through him. And at the other end, Paquette's able to walk right off the wall. It's a tough angle. Hammond goes down on the play, but he gets beat short side, and the post is his friend on that one. But it's a dangerous play on the other end by Paquette as he really buried Smith into the boards. And lucky that Smith is all right on the play. Ottawa did not have a shot on goal in its last power play. Turris, along with MacArthur and Stone up front. It's Carlson and Weirkosh on the back end. Or those hits from behind, they're very concerning for me. I know the focus in the league, everyone talks about headshots. The league's doing a pretty good job of trying to clean those up, but hits from behind are just as concerning. At the point, here's Carlson setting it up. Feeds across to Stone, his cross seam pass picked off by Boyle and sent down the ice. Former Sens coach Rick Bonus directs the penalty killers for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now Weirkos has it knocked away. Still full of racing to it. These two teams, of course, are expansion cousins. They both entered the league in 1992. And between them, lost 124 games that first season. 70 by Ottawa, 54 for Tampa. Yeah, it was a rough ride that first season for both organizations. You take another look at this hit from behind here. Bobby Ryan's going to throw it down low, and you can see what Zach Smith's thought process is. He turn his back on the play to try and gain inside position, body position, and Paquette just goes through the body. People argue that you, if you're Zach Smith, you have to brace yourself for that hit or don't turn your back on the play, but Paquette has to be aware that the numbers are facing him. He has to take ownership of that hit. Well. There's a lot of talk about the bear hug rule that yep. Brian Burke has talked about, where a player could, in that situation, would be allowed to wrap a player up. I'm, I'm in favor of it, Gord. If it's going to save somebody uh, a, a serious injury, maybe people are talking about it slows the game down a little bit, but I, I'd much rather take it in that four-foot area, a little bear hug, than something uh, a lot worse, put it that way. Carter has to leave the zone. He's got Boyle all over him. And Carlson swings back to pick it up. 30 seconds to go in this power play. Carlson fires it down the Tampa zone. On a set play, MacArthur gets there first. Plays it back to the point that Carlson raced over to keep it alive. <laughs> what a display of skating by Eric Carlson there. Now he's got the puck at the point. 10 seconds to go in the power play. Carlson shoots. That's a rare time he shot didn't get through as it was blocked up high by Pilat. As I mentioned before, Gord, they're focusing on Eric Carlson and really trying to limit his time and space because they know he is that type of difference maker. No shots for Ottawa to blast two power plays. It remains a 1-1 game here in the second period. Fired down in the Ottawa zone. Took a funny bounce off the stanchion. and Cody Ceci back to pick it up. Plays across to Mathot. Now moved ahead by Pajo and on Killorn. And Pajo trying to drop it back for Condra. Carl loose in the corner. Condra stepped into him. And the Lord took a hard puck there from Pajo. Now Cuckoo swings it back for Stanko. Now bouncing puck in the feet of Pajo as Paquette was trying to take it away from him. And CC racing to it. Ottawa free back of Boston with a game in hand on the Bruins. Boston and Detroit still scoreless in the second period. 
He's got to watching that closely. We'll have an update for you. Saket fires. He hammered it wide. That goes to Korn. Centering pass. Just Paquette racing in his cuckoo for it. Here's Stanko. Spins back on the thought. Goes between the legs. Stanko still with it. Thanks it back for Cuckoo. Had to look. Top pass in front. Paquette tried to knock it across for Stanko. And the pass misfired. And now Mathot on it in desperation. Just fires it down. And we're going to face off in the Ottawa zone. Pasho taking a little breather for himself. In the offensive zone, it all starts. This line is a ton of energy. They finish every check. You see Pasho going to close the boards off on Kalorn. The good clean hit. Kalorn turns at the last second, but that's still shoulder on shoulder. As we've seen Pajot engage physically all game, Ben Bishop, Kalorn, it doesn't matter who it is, he's going to finish his check. Now Strawman plays it across for Nesterov. His pass misfired, Mathot goes back, and this time it's icing against the Lightning with seven gone here in the second period. And with Coach Dave Cameron moving Mike Hoffman up and down the lineup, inserting Zach Smith, and maybe higher in the lineup than people would expect. That's the right thing and keeps that Pajot line intact. Is they've been such a, a pace car for this group as far as energy level, speed, and, and as everyone's using that term, it's almost overused, playing the right way. But that's what the Senators need to continue to do. And every time they're on the ice, they're at least being difference makers as far as creating that energy level that the Senators need. There's the pipe from well out and Bishop shaking his head as the puck goes back up the other way. We're seeing an eye shot that eluded him and you're right he's shaking his head about it. Now was across to Griba being four checked there by Druan. And Boyle gathers up a loose puck for the lightning. Boyle shovels that across to Strawman with time. Strawman shoots Hammond makes the save rebound drops down to Druan couldn't connect. And Boyle back on it. Ryan Boyle works it back. A backhand shot and handcuff Hammond. But he's able to hang on. And now Borbieski and Callahan are into it in front of the Ottawa goal. Borbieski with a great chance moments ago rings it right off the pipe behind Ben Bishop. Slayer Cuckoo playing his second NHL game. His first one was on Tuesday in Toronto. Tonight he's playing against a team that he grew up not far from here, about 50 minutes in Winchester, and his dad, Brian and Karen, are right beside him. Brian says he's more nervous today than he was on Tuesday when he was in Toronto. If you real, if you recognize them, they're wearing the same outfits they had on in Tuesday because I said, where's your jersey? They go, it's the same outfit we wore. We don't want to mess things up. Oh. So they're just as superstitious as the players, but they're really enjoying it. And guys, they suspect there are 400 people here tonight from either Winchester or from the Cuckoo family to watch this game with Slater on the ice. Guys, what, what happens if he plays 15 years? You're going to wear that shirt, <laughs> that shirt and jacket for the next 15 years? They'll settle with this for now and go from there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That blue coat will be black by the time oh. it's done. Or something worse. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty exciting for families. Well, we were saying on Tuesday night, what a great thrill for him to play his first game and have his family there. MacArthur brings it in for Ottawa. Fish about to play it. Coming for goalie, because you never know where you're going to play, right? Now Carlson fires. Then it's Stamkos up high. Here's Stone back with it. Stone centering pass. Bounces back to Mathot. Stone in the corner for Turris. Backhand pass in front for Stone. Poke checked away by Bishop. Here's Carlson back with it. Long wrist shot right on. Bishop makes the save. And Kucherov has it for the Lightning, but Stone's all over him. What a second half Mark Stone is having. As Danko's picks that off and beats ahead to Palat. Ah! Andre Palat waits, reglides. Danko's fires. That went off a stick and wide, and Hammond might have got a piece of it. Now the puck loose in the corner. Kucherov back to the point to Carl with a shot. Hammond can't save. Palat kicking out of the puck. Still loose. Hammond down. Able to freeze it. Furious Tampa pressure. Let's go to James Duffy for an update. All right, Gord. Midway through the game in Detroit. Red Wings pressuring. Tuca kind of loses this one off the boards. And Luke Glendening is a favorite son of Ottawa for a few minutes. 1-0 Red Wings. <laughs> One 
nothing there. By the way, Brandon Peary has scored again for Florida. <laughs> he has 22 goals and two assists this year. <laughs> That's amazing. His last 15 points have been goals. Here's a lead pass to Mike Hoffman. Hoffman in, shoots, and Bishop just got his blocker on that. And a quick release again for Mike Hoffman. He leads all rookies and goals with 26. Feeds down to Ryan. Ryan plays it across, and Weirkoch couldn't get a shot away. As Kalor intercepted it. And now Bishop hangs on to that, and Bishop with a little jab at the end of that play on Ryan, and Ben Bishop is known for having a bit of a short fuse. A little feisty in the net, for sure. And Mike Hoffman gets a good opportunity towards the net. Down the wall, a one-on-one -on -one situation. Going to be pushed wide, but good snapshot. But Ben Bishop stays on his feet. Stands there and makes it look easy. And you know, ben Bishop's been active in this period, handling the puck. Good with his rebounds and certainly, like you pointed out, for feisty. Now a steal by Hoffman. He ripped it that wide. Now Ryan gets buried as Callahan finds Drewen. Jonathan Drewen. Callahan did a good job to stay onside to keep the play alive as Drewen works it back. With a whack there from Cece and plays it back behind the goal. And the pass picked up by Zabanajad. In with Hoffman. Zabanajad hooks that around Drewen. Hoffman slides it back. Zibanejad slaps it across. Oh, what a shot. Cece with a great chance. And Ben Bishop makes the stop. Sweet pass. And Cece got all of it. This is a great save by Ben Bishop as he reads the lateral pass here. Hoffman's going to kick it back to Zibanejad. Little fake shot and a seam play right over to coast. Cody Cece that's very wide on the play, but Bishop's able to read it, get a good push across, and obviously that helps when you're six foot eight. You don't have to push that far, but he makes a good save and corrals the rebound. But another great play by Zibanejad to find Cody Cece on that back door and generate a good scoring opportunity. Barbario had the wall sealed by Condra. Midway point of the second period. Ottawa shooting Tampa, 18 to 15 in a 1-1 game. Kowski steps into Borbieski, the puck comes loose to Lazar. Steps away from Morrow and spins back, but Morrow stays on it. Brendan Morrow feeds back to Boyle with a wrist shot. That was blocked. Pajot got a piece of it. And Pajot drops it back for Lazar as Ottawa breaks in four wide. Lazar moves it on Barbario. Breaks the puck in the corner. JT Brown knocked down by Pajot. Boyle slides it back for Barbario. Morrow up for Brown, and J.T. Brown, son of former Minnesota Vikings running back Ted Brown, had that knocked away. He was signed as an undrafted college free agent by Tampa in 2012. A lot of teams were after him. Cuckoo took a hard bump there from Smith. Shiazong picks up a loose puck. Alex Shiazong in weight, shoots. That was blocked by Cuckoo. Gets it back and shoots again. And Bishop makes the stop. Now Filippola back on it. Stamkos slides that down to the Ottawa zone. But play call with 8.54 to go in the second period. You're watching Canadian Tire Senators Hockey from Ottawa on TSN. Well, Senators continue to chip away at Ben Bishop. He shows some frustration sometimes. And when the goaltender does get mad and wear it, that just eggs the guys on a little bit more. A little whack here, a little joust. Little comment after the whistle and any little edge to get the goaltender off of his game as Ben Bishop has been really sharp in this game for the Tampa Bay Lightning and Senators continue to try and wear him down not only physically but mentally. Now Stroma with it. And John Stroma has had a five-year deal with the Lightning on July the 1st. Feeds that ahead to centering pass by Stan. Goes knocked down by Stone and Kalorn feeds it back in for Tampa. Racing to it is Mathot. Lead pass goes to Stone. In comes Mark Stone with MacArthur and Turris. MacArthur, a sharp angle shot, stopped by Bishop. Turris quickly on the rebound. Slides it back to Mathot with a drive. That got through. Bishop made the stop rebound. MacArthur taps at it. And Bishop will hang on to that. Oh, that can only mean one thing. Someone's playing the piano. The quest for the iconic green jacket returns. The Masters begins for the Par 3 contest Wednesday at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific on the TSN Network. Live coverage also available on TSN Go and TSN.ca presented by CI Investments.
Steve Duffy will be down there leading our coverage from Augusta National. And here, a 1 1 game. That's the midway point of the second period. Tampa's actually got one win in its last four games, stumbling with four regular defensemen out of the lineup. Here, Kosh goes back. Picked off by Palat. Andre Palat swings that rink wide. Kuka comes jumping in and pokes it ahead. Now a centering pass by Kucherov, and that's tipped wide by Nemestikov. Carl looks ahead as a manager had chopped a duck. Palat keeps it alive for Tampa. Now Andre Palat has to race back with Weirkosh all over him at center ice. That was great work by Patrick Weirkosh to stick with him. To apply the pressure and force it out of the zone. Uses his long stick, uses that reach to joust and get it out of their zone. CC ahead for Zibanejad. That pass in behind Hoffman. Now Weirkosh picks no! it up. Weirkosh leading the rush, drops it back for Ryan. Now Ryan skates by the loose button to Mesnikov to the point, but not out. Pajot was backing it up and kept it alive. Will 1-0 Red Wings in Detroit. As Paquette brings it in again, if Ottawa were to win tonight, and Boston were to lose, Ottawa would be in charge of its own destiny. The Sens could win out and make the playoffs. Having a one to go here in the second period. To access your coupons for exclusive savings at participating Canadian Tire locations, visit OttawaSenators.com slash SendSave. Mark Borvietsky does a, a good job in this game so far, being physical, trying to limit time and space of the offensive group of the Tampa Bay Lightning. In bigger picture, he just got to keep his game simple, and that's what makes him so effective. Drew and drops it back to Strawman. He's across to Nestrov. His shot was blocked wide by Lazar. Now Drew and get us up the loose puck. Drew and lost it to Lazar. And Lazar feeds ahead to Pajot. Jean Gabriel Pajot. Nestrov stays with him as Pajot stays on it. Lazar comes in to help out. And the battle ensues in behind Bishop. Lonnie picked up by Strawman. Lazar falls. And he takes down Strawman, who is slow to get to his feet as he fired it down to the Ottawa zone. Pajot tied up there by Druan. And now Condra with Tampa changing has some time. Skates away from Stamkos. Condra lost the puck. And back come the the other way. Stamkos in across the line. In comes Stamkos. Shoots to the club save. Made by Andrew Hammond. Steve Stamkos looking short side shelf and... We all know that that's his bread and butter down that side, and Andrew Hammond makes a terrific save, and Eric Condra had the turnover at the far blue line. You have to be aware, especially with a guy like Stamkos on the ice, but good job to push him outside. It's a terrific shot, but look at the positioning by Andrew Hammond. Rips it out of the air and little Statue of Liberty for the crowd. <laughs> Off one by Terrace. Carlson plays across for Stone. So the Ottawa Rookie of the Year vote is going to be interesting. Andrew Hammond, by the way, is too old to be considered a rookie, but you got Hoffman, Stone. A lot of candidates for that. As Witkowski swings it rink wide for Kalor. He shoots. Blocker saved by Hammond, but bounced off the inboards to Stancoast. Takes the pass from Killorn. Stan close feeds back with Kelsky. Shoots through traffic that was tipped and went just wide. Barbario plays it back in behind the Ottawa goal. Five and a half to go in the second period. The pass back to Witkowski missed. And Bishop is back to play it. These Tampa forwards are so dangerous off the rush. That Stanko shot and then the Killorn one just now. Andrew Hammond made a terrific kind of right shoulder save. And you look at the rookies, Gordon, you were talking about potential rookie of the year for the Ottawa Senators. Well, Mark Stone right up there in the second half of emergence of what he's been able to do, but Mike Hoffman right there. Yes, Johnny Goudreau has been a difference maker in Calgary, but so, who, so who's your rookie of the year, Jamie? Right now? Yeah, who will be your rookie of the year? Aaron Eckblatt. Yeah. 
I mean, at 18 years old, what he's been able to do, I, I think it's tough to do, especially as a defender. Sharp angle shot taken by Cody Cece, stopped there by Bishop. Back comes Ryan for it. Sabanajad digging in the corner with Kowski all over him. And a penalty coming now to Tampa. With 4.56 to go. In the second period, it'll be Luke Witkowski who goes off, and Ottawa's back on the power play. The entire center of hockey continues from Ottawa after that. Tonight's player profile is brought to you by Asante, providing complete financial advice. Jonathan Drouin just turned 20 last week. He was the Canadian Hockey League Player of the Year for Halifax in 2013. He was sent back to junior last year after being injured in training camp. And Drouin has four goals on the year after scoring here tonight. I just like that move by general manager Steve Eiserman. Again, showing patience, sending him back to junior, regardless of an injury in training camp or not. Bigger picture, it's about the development and what's best for him, and then what's best for the organization for the big picture and for his future, and not just trying to ram a young guy into the lineup for the sake of that. Boy, now you get him when he's 27. Instead of Look at potential unrestricted free agency at age 25. So many factors go into it. Obviously, the business standpoint that you just pointed out, but also from development, he's more suited physically and mentally to step right into the NHL. Ryan centering passes. A lot of a power play really struggling. No shots in its last two attempts. So it's all about keeping it simple. Start making these east-west play, plays and... Fancy plays, now you get into a little bit of trouble, and that's what Tampa closes off. Savannah yeah. Jan drops it off to Carlson. Leg one jumping ahead. His rink wide pass is almost picked off by Kalor. Now Carlson plays it in deep. And midway through this power play, not much showing yet for Ottawa. Savannah Jan battling for it. Ryan comes in here as well. Leg one picks it up and slides it back to Weirkosh. Weirkosh to Leg one. Back to Weirkosh, lots of traffic. Shoots, Bishop makes his stop. Tried to shoot and Bishop poke checked him. Legwan back with it to Weirkot. Back to Legwan. In, drops it down. to the left hand shot. He looked at it wide. Carlson back to Weirkot. Swings it across. Legwan to drive. Bishop to save. The rebound cleared by Barbario. And Filpola sends the puck back down the ice. It's better work on the power play because you make more simple play. Now that pass misses. Filpola across the line. And the play is called offside. Here's Dave Duffy with an update for it. Gord, Alex Ovechkin told Pierre Lebrun today if he couldn't play in Washington, he'd play in Montreal. Loves that city, loves that rink, and watch this. Bam! And he's area 51. His 51st of the season caps up 2-1. I'm glad you're an ex goaltender, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he potted a few on me early on in his career as I was ending mine, and terrifying player to play against because just got, like Steven Stamkos, you give them an opportunity, they can find the net. You give them three inches of, of net, and they'll find it. Final second of his Ottawa power play. Clark MacArthur works in, spins it around for Stone, loses it back at the point for CeCe. Crosser misses the puck in the corner. Bishop out to play it. Lifts it across the paquet as Wachowski steps out of the box. Two shots on goal for Ottawa on that power play, but it's a 1-1 game with 2.40 to go. In the second period, the pass in the middle of the ice to Palat. Just missed Boyle, his teammate there, and now Kucherov with it. Slides it ahead to Boyle with Palat. Boyle trying to center it. CC blocked that. Al Palat back with it. His centering pass blocked by Lazar. Mathot has it. Up ahead for Condra. Lazar streaking in. Gets it behind Nesterov. Lazar poke check from behind by Nesterov. And now Lazar back on it. Come up with a shot and a penalty. And now Korbietsky bobbles the puck at the point. Now the crowd may be right on that one as Nesterov got his stick on Lazar and tripped him up at the last second. Oh. Al Palat drops for Stamco. Peels back and drops it back in the corner for Palat with two to go in the period. Witkowski back at the point. As time shoots through Travis that deflected went just wide. Condra back with it. Hydro trying to hack it out. And now Palat kept it alive for a moment. Condra picks it up. This line needs to change for Ottawa. Palat's all over Condra. Bent him over the boards in front of the Tampa bench. And 
Now Condra can make his way off as Ottawa gets the puck in deep. And that line with Pajot and Condra and Lazar, they're not big guys, but, and they play physical every time they're on the ice. Now Callahan slips it down for Tampa. Puck loose in the corner. Callahan digging for it. Paquette coming in to help out. Picked up by Drouin. Jonathan Drouin slides it back for Strollman. Runners that wide of the goal to Callahan. Loose at the side of the goal. Ryan Callahan backhands that back in front. That went through the crease, and it's knocked out by Legwan. Final minute now of the second period. Legwan knocks it down for Smith. Zach Smith works around Strollman. Callahan steps into him hard in the corner. And Cooper had a stick tied up with a penalty coming up. And it'll go against Ottawa. And now Strawman back with it. Finds Cuckoo. And the play called at center ice. And with 37 seconds to go in the period, David Legwand will go off. With a tri tripping penalty behind the net, 200 feet away from your own net, David Legwand's going to get the stick in. On Callahan right there, a little can open play and trying to plead his case to the ref, but it happens right in front of him. And Tampa's going to get an opportunity with 37 seconds left here in the second period to get a couple trip pucks towards the net. Jonathan Drew has scored in the power play in the first period. He's up there now along with Stamkos and Kaloran up front, Filpola and Strawman on the back end. And Pajo steps in to take the face off for Ottawa. He's scrambled draw, controlled by the Lightning. Strawman. As they get set up, Anton Strawman. Has a look from the top. Take the long shot, hit a leg in front, bounced away from Druin. And now Druin's going to take a penalty. He holds down Driver as Pajo brings it in. John Gabriel Pajo buys some time. And now Stamkos. Sent flying as he and Pajot collided at center ice, and Pajot drops to his knees as well. They kind of clipped each other on the way by. And Stamkos kind of leaned into that. That was, that looked dangerous from my angle. Eric Riba lets Stamkos know that wasn't acceptable. And but Pajot is limping noticeably as athletic therapist Jerry Townend comes to tend to him. And a frustrated John Gabriel Pajot. Here's the collision in the neutral zone here. Pajo certainly in some distress going off. Curl and drag play, and Stamkos at the last second tries to go shoulder and shoulder. They end up going knee on knee. It's Pajo, you see the right knee, and both right knees collide. Stamkos goes down, Pajo goes down, and here's the penalty on Drew Ann, on Eric Riba. Same type of play as Lagwan in a four on four scenario. And the crowd just saw the replay of the Stamkos play with Pajo. And Dave Cameron saw it as well. He's not happy. Yeah, you got to be aware of those, regardless of who it is, whether it's Stamkos or Matt Cook, you got to be careful of those knee on knee plays. Here's Stone. Away from Nemestikov. Shovels it back in front. Pitcher will hop on that with 0.6 seconds left in the period. And some ill will here between Tampa and Ottawa in the late stages of the second period. When Coach Dave Cameron was, you pointed out, not happy as he watched the replay on the Jumbotron and that knee-to-knee -knee situation. You know it's not intentional because you can see Stamkos actually try and lean in with his right shoulder and Pajot at the last second gets out of the way, but they still have the collision. So the score at the end of one, or the end of two rather, is the same as it was at the end of one. It's 1-1 one, one, in a crucial Thursday night tilt for the Ottawa Senators, even with Tampa, with Detroit one nothing on Boston after two as well. Coming up for our second intermission, you're watching Canadian Tire Senators Hockey on TSN. Here's your host, James Dustin. All right, thank you, Gordon. The boys will talk about that Pajot Stamkos collision in a second, plus Ottawa's troubles on the power play. That's all coming up in our second intermission as well. The latest on that game, which the Wings continue to lead, and the rest of your playoff story on TSN. 
Back in Ottawa, here's your second period scoring summary. Brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. No scoring in that period. Tampa shoots Ottawa 10 to 8. Overall, it's 23 19 in favor of the Senators. Roy Miller back here with Jamie McLennan. And Jamie, this game has developed some teeth. Yeah, absolutely. It got very physical in the second period, and the emotion level raised through the roof. And it wasn't just Pajot and Van Bishop going at it. You're right, this game has teeth because maybe there is some history in the, the backstory. Some of these players have played in the AHL against each other. You mentioned John Cooper did a terrific job developing some of these young players for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Well, Isaac Borbietsky, Pajot, they've been in the minors and I'm sure they've had their battles at the AHL level and it certainly has carried over to the National Hockey League level. So big picture, there's no love loss between these organizations. Tampa looking to get back on track as they haven't been in the winning ways lately and Ottawa we know what the, the story is for them they need to win a period to win a game and stay in that playoff hunt we saw Jean-Gabriel Pajot tried that knee or that leg prior to the start of this period he's on the Ottawa bench talking to Jerry Townen quite often it's a Charlie horse Jamie as opposed to a structural knee issue and sometimes the Charlie horse can be worse as Cam Neely yeah, there's some, I've seen some real bad ones uh, throughout my career as well with some of my teammates. And you're right, not only the, the pain that the guys have to go through, but how, far, how long they're out for. So four on four to open this third period. There's 1.10 to go in the penalty to David Leguan. And then you'll have a 23 second power play for Ottawa. As Drew Ann remains in the box for the Lightning. Matt Carl. Out to center ice he goes, it bounced away from Kucherov. Now Kucherov back with it, swings it rink wide. And Cuckoo across for Carl. Slater Cuckoo jumps in for it. He's played just over 11 minutes so far in the game. He's wrapped around a 15 minute night. He's been very strong in this game. And boy, you pointed out how good of a skater he is. And every time you're a good skater, you give yourself an opportunity to jump in and out of the play and recover from it types of mistakes. And now Stamkos is hearing it about the Pajot collision. Bounce it back for Barbario. Picked off by Torres. He's got Stone with him. Here comes Kyle Torres. Walks in. Shoots. He flipped it wide. Weirkosh put me on it now. Behind the goal for Stone. He was bumped there by Witkowski. Stone stays with it. Torres battling for it. And now Stone. Walks off the board. Weirkosh comes in, leg one steps back on the ice for Ottawa, so the Sens are on the power play briefly. Turris drops it back, McCarthy off the bench, shoots, it goes off the stick of uh, Barbario, up and out of play. Mark McCarthy's going to get an opportunity because of the change. Leg one had come to the bench to even up the play, and Kyle Turris is going to spot him through the seam. Stone's going to cycle it down low, keep it in, and that's where Turris. It's yelled at by MacArthur coming off the bench and hits a stick and ends up over the glass. Off the face-off, controlled by Ottawa. Here's Cece with it. Torres centers it. And battling for that puck was MacArthur in front. Now brought back by Paquette. Paquette, the centering pass knocked down by MacArthur. Carlson picks it up. There's a chance three on two for Ottawa. Carlton with Stone and Cece. The centering pass for Cece. Taps it there for Stone. The puck sat there for a moment. And now Drew has it for Tampa. Paquette slides that softly down to the Ottawa zone. MacArthur drops it back for Carlson. Detroit on the power play in the third period against Boston. As Cece whistled that wide. And Strawman picks up the loose puck for Tampa. The Lightning will wrap up a road trip in Florida. And then go home and play New Jersey and Boston to close out their schedule. Ottawa's got Washington here on Saturday. Then at Toronto, they'll play Pittsburgh, the Rangers, and Philly. Centering pass for Barbario. Knocked down by Smith. He couldn't clear it out. J.T. Brown with it now. And Brown got thrown down. Here's Smith with it. Back Smith gains center ice. And across the blue line as he made the play. Legwad with a half step ahead. Offside. 
return, Jose and Mendez and Gord Wilson after every home game for all access, presented by Bell, live on the Sens website and mobile app. We'll hear from Ottawa head coach Dave Cameron, along with the key players from tonight's game. Take a look at, here it is. What's going on in that playoff picture? And you keep continuing to update that Boston game. And Ottawa just has to control what they can. And that's winning two points tonight. So Stephen Weiss has scored. Put that up on the board. A huge cheer goes up. And you can say what you want about the players focusing on the game. They all say it. They check, they check the out of town scoreboard during the game. Yes, they How do. How could you not? You have to. That's part of the competitive nature, knowing where you're you stand and you have to give that all to get that two points in this game to give yourself that opportunity. So here's your chance now. If Detroit can make that score hang, stand up and Ottawa can win tonight, the Senators will be in control of their own destiny. If they win out, they're in. And now Condra knocks it down. And Florence stepped into him. And James, definitely tell us more about the goal. Yeah, here's what they were cheering about. Detroit on the power play right near it ends. Watch Stephen Weiss. Shane does the work to the net. Weiss finishes and a 2-0 lead third period. We'll keep you up to date. So that energizes the crowd here in Ottawa. But work to do against the Tampa Bay Lightning. The long shooting goes down to Hammond. And he'll squeeze that with 16.21 to go. Going in Detroit the other night, you talk about scoreboard watching. Really tough to do that because Detroit doesn't really have that set up for the out-of-town scoreboard. But in the end, it's hard to see. Almost that old school. You, got, you need a guy just with numbers <laughs> putting it up there. That building is... Pretty, let's, let's use one word for that building. It's pretty gritty. Oh, I love the Joe, though. The smell of it is pizza. That place, that's an old-school hockey rink right there. It certainly is. There's Nestroff, a long shot, and Hammond makes the save on that. Hoffman. Chip the puck out. It bounces down to Barbario. Now Zabanajad with it. it. Pinballs around on him. Zabanajad tied up by Nemestikov. Gets it ahead to Hoffman. With Shiazo. Alex Shiazo in. Shoots. Gets the save. And the rebound bounces back down to Shia's own. Now Zibanejad. Along with Hoffman and Shia Song. This is the forward line for Ottawa. So Hoffman and Shia Song normally centered by Legwan. And now Palat. Rink wide he goes, and that plays offside as he finds Kucherov. James Seth has another update for us. They won't like this one as much in Ottawa, Gord. This time, Boston on the power play. Riley Smith will take the shot, and Carl Soderberg is there for the big rebound. He beats Morazic 2-1. to one. Alex Shiason gets an opportunity. Zibanejad is going to find him. Hoffman's going to kick it to him. Shiason through the middle, and Ben Bishop makes it. A good save off the rush as Chieson's able to get a good offering. The average amount of ice time for a forward to game is 15 minutes. Chieson playing his 23, last 23 games been under that total every single time. Certainly, Often under 10 minutes. Certainly you expect more from him. He's a big, strong guy, and every time you talk to Coach Dave Cameron about him, the, the message is the same thing. He needs to play that straight line, physical game, get to the front of the net, and stay at the blue paint and hammer pucks away, whether it's rebounds, screens, tips. And if you don't do that consistently in the coach's mind, you're not as effective. And he needs to simplify his game and maybe play that, that type of irritable style night in and night out, and maybe his ice time will go up. By the way, that Boston-Detroit game is a couple of minutes ahead of this one. 13 and a half to go there. Here's Kalorn with it now being watched by Griba. Stamkos picks up a loose puck. Steven Stamkos drops it down to Carl. The stick was looked at by Stone. Topol gets the puck back to the point to Cuckoo. Later Cuckoo's long shot kicked up by Hammond. The rebound bounced right back to him. It bounced off an Ottawa defender right to Hammond who had to make a quick save. 
So that goes into sharp save by Andrew Hammond. That the initial puck comes in and he's able to make the left pad save. It's there's traffic at Brent Stamkos waving at it. And then it comes off the left skate of Griba. And Hammond readjusts on the play. He's got to push across, get that body on it, and corral it as Kaloran is trying to get to the net for the rebound. And it's a good play by Hammond to track that puck initially and then make the second save and get the whistle. Here comes Azar oh. along with Condra. Curtis Azar busting into that can. Shot goes high and wide. Back at the point. Paquette. Ahead for Drouin. Jonathan Drouin winds in and on a thought. And Drouin plays it down low, but it's picked off by Pajot. Carlson quickly ahead for Lazar. Condra jumping in. And Lazar and Drouin collide. Former teammates on the Canadian National Junior Team. Now picked off by Strom on the swing back to pick it up. Curtis Lazar showing that speed and and as the games have gone on here and he's playing on that line with Condra and Pajot, he's showing more confidence with the puck. He's holding on to it more and driving the net and that seems to be in his wheelhouse as far as what makes him effective. Fired down to the Ottawa zone. Here's Weirkaj on it along the boards for Legwan. Knocked down by Brown. He shoots blocked by CeCe. And Smith centers it. JT Brown knocked that right back into the Ottawa bench. And play his call with 13.48 to go in the third period. It's white knuckle time around the NHL. Watching the game and the out-of-town scoreboard. We're back after this. And they have not yet posted that score on the board here in Ottawa. You don't want to upset the fans. Well, the last thing you want to see if you're the Ottawa Senators is Detroit and Boston go to overtime. Yeah, that's the worst case scenario is that turning into a three-point game. Uh, and that seems every game down the stretch here that's important. Those, it is a 3-2 game and head in that direction. Barbario to Kucherov. Long shot, knocked down by Hammond. Carlson is tied up there by Kucherov, and Carlson throws him down. The puck loose in the corner to Mestikov. Lost it to Zibanejad. Hoffman quickly ahead for Shiasson. And now Shiasson knocked down and played called at the Tampa line. Look at the Senators' Facebook page after every win to vote the Marks Man of the Match. Mark Stone might be a candidate for that with the goal of the first period. On his 20th of the season, as you pointed out, he was so good the other night in Detroit, and he's continued on that consistent play. Very tough to play against. Needs the league in takeaways. And offensively, he's really found his game. Here's Kalorn with it. Back hands the puck down to the Ottawa zone. And the thoughts waiting for it. Stan Post gives him a chop. And now MacArthur on it. Steps away from Kalorn. Brings it around for Carlson. Squeeze that by Barbario, but the puck goes all the way down the ice. And the faceoff could be back down to the Ottawa zone. 13.04 to go in the third period. How about tonight, though? Yarmir Yager ties Ron Francis for fourth in the all-time goal scoring list. Alex Ovechkin passes Peter Bondra for the Caps all-time goal scoring lead. And Andrew Hammond with a chance to make history as well. He could become the first goal fitter in history with 16 of his first 18 starts. Pretty impressive feats, all three guys, especially if Hammond can do it at uh, such a crucial time of the season. Coleman's long shot right down to Hammond. He's able to stop that. For Hammond, of course, one of his wins did come in relief. He's 14-1-1. As a starter. So there were the three stars of the month for March. Andrew Hammond, number one. Gary Hoodler, 10 goals in 15 games. And Devin Dubnik. Boy, he and Andrew Hammond have authored two of the most unlikely stories this season. You couldn't have scripted that at the start of the season if you said that Devin Dubnik would be in the conversation not only for Vesna and people are throwing the, the word hard around and what he's been able to do in Minnesota help turn things around. And then Andrew Hammond's become a household name. And, he was destined to be Strawman off the end board. The rebound bounces. Stan goes and fires it right on. As I mentioned, destined to be what the third goaltender in the minors at 27 years old. So really carved out a name for himself, earned himself a, a contract moving forward. 
Well, well Jamie, the, the Hammond to Dubnik exactor as the big goaltending stories this year pays a lot. Yeah. I mean, those were two guys that no one was talking about at the start of the season. Especially and, Devin Dubnik. He was the fourth goaltender depth chart last year, a year ago, for the Montreal Canadiens. Now Stamkos off the draw, flips it wide. There's a chance now for Strauman who falls in the corner. And Condra picks it up for Ottawa. And close it knocked away by Lazar. And Nestor off back four for the Lightning. 25-24, now the shot's in favor of Tampa. In across the line is still full of just out of the reach of Kalor. And Weirkosh plays it around for CeCe. For Paggio. John Gabriel Paggio for Patrick Weirkosh. Back to Paggio streaking in. Paggio has a look, shoots, short time. Bishop made the stop, leading the other way. And now Paggio kept hard into Drew at, or Kalorn rather. And Nestorov plays it rink wide for Stamkos. Even Stamkos knocked down by Paggio, a little payback for that late second period hit. And now Lazar swings back court for Ottawa. They gave him a little extra after on the way off of the ice and a little comment as well. Ah, what did he say, Jamie? That's <laughs> for after the game. Zach Smith in on later Cuckoo. And the battle ensues in the corner. JT Brown brings it ahead. He's got Boyle and Carl with a Brown streaking in. Shoots! And Hammond got an arm on that. Brown was buried by Borbieski. JT Brown is slow to get to his feet. That was a hard hit for Borbieski. Yeah, he's in some distress as he's heading off to the bench right now. And you're right, that was a heavy finish by Borbieski. It was a great shot by Brown and a good save by Hammond, but not the finish that Brown was expecting. Winkowski centers for Tampa, racing to it is Barbario. Mark Barbario, the Montreal native, plays it down low. Callahan is knocked away by Griba. Here's Callahan back with it, to the point to Barbario. Now Paquette lost it to Griba. There is Griba, lifts it high off the glass, was it? Hang on, they're going to say this is a penalty against Ottawa, delay a game. The clearing attempt did not hit the glass. And so Tampa's going to the power play. This is a big opportunity for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Eric Greiba is going to take the puck to his backhand. Trying to use the glass to exit. And it goes straight over, and that's a challenge. And here's the Borbietsky hit on Brown as he gives him a push at the last second, and Brown Goes in awkwardly. No, it seems to be all right. He's a tough character. So Tampa to the power play. Their only goal scored by Jonathan yeah, Drouin. Yeah, yeah. On the man advantage, he has it now. Drouin. Brings it back to Strobel with a shot. He pounded it wide. Might have been intentionally wide looking for the care of the Stamkos. And now Strawman back for it. Anton Strawman winds around Torres. Works his way in. Cody Cheesy steps hard into him. Stone with a puck down low for Ottawa. Hammers it off the boards and back down the ice. Real smart play by Mark Stone. He didn't turn and fire it with a hope shot down the middle. Took a little ice for himself, made sure that he fired it hard off the boards and got it down 200 feet. Coppola swings it across to Stan, goes the pass too far for him, and now Gorbietsky high off the glass, but not out. And by this kick dealt by Stone. Kalorin across the line. It's spun around by Carlson. Puck knocked down by Philpott at the line. Across he goes for Stamkos. In comes Steven Stamkos at his pocket picked by Turin. Back at the point is Philpott. Strawman across for Drouin. 45 seconds to go in this Tampa power play. Drouin, the centering pass missed Stamkos from Philpott. And racing to it is Turin who fires it down. Good work again. Kyle Turris was really strong on Steven Stamkos down the wall, limiting his space and was able to turn that puck over and kept everything to the outside. Here's Palat across the line. Nestor had it taken away. The chance there, short-handed to Legrand. Here comes David Legrand. It's stopped by Mitchell. Now Palat back with it. And Nevestikov fell along the boards. He was slow to get to his feet. Final second of this Tampa power play. Here's Callahan with it. 
Brian Callahan swings it back, and a hot shot there by Nesterov is gloved by Hammond. Oh, what a chance for David Ledwan. Short-handed late in this Tampa power play. It's a great chance by Ledwan, and Rose is getting pinched off there by Pilat. Uses his body to cut in, but Ben Bishop playing the angles, takes away the lower part of the net, it goes into the butterfly, and Leguan puts it right into him, but it good chance there by Leguan to go ahead 2-1 here shorthanded. Leguan thought there should have been a penalty in the play for a little bit of a slash he took. Now the face-off one by advantage yet, and Driver is out for Ottawa. Two shots on goal for Tampa on that power play. Huge kill for the Senators. They did a real good job of keeping everything to the outside, and Andrew Hammond made a couple nice, solid saves. Royal bouncing off Shia, so in comes Hoffman with it now. Steps around Cuckoo, Morrow on it. Hoffman plays it down low for Zibanej, had it bounced away from him. And Slater Cuckoo lays it off the boards and back up to center right. The Slater Cuckoo story is remarkable in that he's undergone three major shoulder operations in the last three years. Brian goes to Carlson. Centers have just missed Shia Song with that. Here's Hoffman with a rolling puck. Fires blocked by Carl. Zibanejad for Hoffman. Spins and shoots him through the traffic. Bishop made the save. Shia Song battling for space with Kuku. They're jousting in front. And finally, JT Brown is back out for Tampa. Flips it back down to the Ottawa zone. And Tampa arguing that shouldn't have been icing as the puck was not going to cross the end line, but that is the call. And meanwhile, way up the ice, she is on Cuckoo, we're still going at it. They've had a massive battle in front of Ben Bishop, and we were talking before about what Alex Chiesaw needs to do to get more ice time, and that's it. Get to that blue paint, be tough to move out of the way, and Hoffman gets the puck towards the net, and then Cuckoo not giving up any inches on the ice, and they're jousting, going back and forth, and Cuckoo gives him a little extra, Chiesaw comes right back at him. Good little spirited battle between two, two players. Takes off one. Carlson gets the shot away. Dribbles wide of the goal. JT Brown. Bottled up there by Mathot, who finds Ryan. Bobby Ryan trying to poke it there. Kuku got in the way. And Ryan skies to knock it down. He and Boyle collide. Smith battles forward in the corner. Seven and a half to go in the third period. Back at the point is Mathot. It bounced over his stick and out. And Tampa can begin the change as Carlson brings it in. Carlson drops. Ryan shoots. Blocked by Matt Carl. And back come the lightning the other way. Stand close for Philpola. Valtteri Philpola in front of Mathot. Stops for four. And back across. The chance for Stan Close. He fired it wide. Hammond might have got a piece of that in the way by. Now Kalorn back with it. There's Barbario with a shot. Blocked by Mathot. And Mathot took that in the midsection. Zach Smith lifts it out. And Mark Mathot is shaken up. But he's heading to the Ottawa Avenger. Trying to at least. That shot staggered him, and Mark Mathot's in distress going to the Ottawa bench. Or did he ever take a shot, but he did some great work that shift, breaking up the initial offering and then laying it on the line to block that shot, and that's what he brings to the table for the Senators every night. Here comes Torres back the other way, fires it down to the Tampa zone, six and a half to go, with Kowski set by, by MacArthur. And now the play called inside. The Tampa Bay line, 6.32 to go in period number three. Mark Mathot lays out and takes that shot full on. 1-1 one, one the score on Canadian Tire Senators Hockey on TSN. Back in here in tonight's game story brought to you by Molson Canadian. Ottawa's out shot his opposition 28-14 in the first three. And Mark Stone's got his 20th of the year. Ottawa's power play is misfiring 0 for 5, just six shots on goal. Ottawa's 0 for 10 in the last two games. And Mark Mathot lays down right there. Barbario gets a good shot away, takes it. And he's able to tough it out as he's on the bench and ready to roll. Shots are even at 27 apiece. Six and a half to go in the third period. Keep an eye on the Boston-Detroit game as well as the Benajan works it and fires, and Bishop knocks that away. Orvietsky steps up. Hit in the corner on Cuckoo by Zibanejad, almost forced the puck free. Now Drew at, at for Callahan, and Ryan Callahan flips it ahead. Griba, bump by Callahan. Borbietsky collides with Drew at, often waiting for it. 
Slides it ahead. Savannah Jed one on one with Cuckoo, but needs a change and slides it in deep. A cat. Plays it across to Cuckoo. His pass knocked down by Hoffman. And now Hoffman slides it ahead for Pajo. John Gabriel Pajo winds his way in, shoots Bishop to save. Rebound loose in front. Lazar gets wrestled down. And they held the puck long enough as Cuckoo had a hold of Lazar. And the faceoff will be in the Tampa zone. This is a great opportunity for John Gabriel Pajo. And it's a good lateral play. Michael Poppins is just going to pop it to him. Now he's going to go east west and let the puck do the work for him and then throw it towards the net. You've got Lazar battling for position. Ben Bishop fighting for that rebound, trying to control it. It's a real nice play by Pajot to put himself in a good scoring opportunity and a, a good save and rebound control by Ben Bishop. Al Palat. Off the back of Kucherov at center ice. Cody Cece picks it up and finds Lazar. Lazar's centering pass was right down to Fisher. It bounces back out in front. And Witkowski finds Kucherov. Palat try to flip that ahead. Knocked down by Condra. And Eric Condra plays it high off the glass and out. And now the play called a hand pass at center ice. With 5.13 to go in the third period. Curtis Lazar with a dandy chance in the last couple of seconds as the puck squirted free from Bishop. Still 1-1 here in Ottawa. Canadian Tire Senators Hockey on TSN is brought to you by Bell. Hockey just got better. By Molson Canadian, diehard fan and proud partner of the Ottawa Senators. And by Scotiabank. You're richer than you think. Scotiabank. Every night they play, their season's on the line, and tonight, no different. Ottawa 1-1 with Tampa. Detroit and Boston are 2-2, under four to go there in the third period. In comes Killorn for it. Now MacArthur lifts it back up to center ice. Nesterov waiting for it for Tampa. Bobbled the puck for a moment, and Kupla plays it back to him. Well, you mentioned the Senators have their life on the line, but they've done a very good job in this period playing positional and a lot of structure. Ah! In comes Killorn, rips that rink wide, Stan goes on the goal line, peels it back, and finds Killorn. Alex Killorn drops it back. Nestor of a shot, that was tipped wide, and MacArthur picks it up. And MacArthur threads it ahead for Stone, the pass misfired. Nicely waved off as Stallman goes back. Waved off because Ben Bishop made the motion to get there. He was going to play it, and he pulled back at the last second. In comes Palat across the line. Andre Palat trying to find Kucherov. And Kucherov spins back in the corner for Palat. Domestikov. Tied up there by Weirkosh. Centers it for Kucherov. Carlson had him tied up. Now Palat, his centering attempt goes high in the air. Bounces off the side. Glass to Carl. Kucherov tied up. And Zibanejad plays that to an open wing to Eric Carlson, feeds it ahead, Shiasong in behind Cuckoo, and Shiasong gets there first. Alex Shiasong pins it back down, here's Hoffman with it. Hoffman centering pass with all the way across the rear, Kosh picked off by Palat. Andre Palat in across the line for Tampa, trying to find Kucherov, his centering pass blocked by Hoffman. And now Hoffman banks it ahead, poked ahead by Lazar. In comes Curtis Lazar, stepping around Bukowski. And Lazar stays on it. Palat comes in to help out. These guys have been on the ice for a while for Tampa. Now Domestikov has it. Domestikov, as Tampa starts to change, finds Bukowski. This pass draws Barbario out. Bounce puck knocked in by Paquette. Cece to Borbieski. Condra chips that ahead, a chance now for Ottawa. Pajo, along with Lazar, Rick White is Condra. Eric Condra in, shoots, Bishop makes the save. And Condra still betrayed him, broke in half. And now Paquette has the loose puck. Condra went for that rebound and realized his stick had snapped in half. Ah! Had to turn and go right to the bench. 2.40 to go in the third period. 1-1, one, one, Ottawa and Tampa. Turris up ahead for MacArthur. In comes MacArthur across the line, shoots! That's the puck just wide by Stone. Stone, trying to center it, here's Carl, playing it across for Paquette. And Carl 
Carlson swings back to pick it up. In comes Carlson. James Jeffy sitting on an update for us. Carlson knocks it away. Here's Shiasol. In across the line for Zibanejad. Zibanejad on the hook check away as Kalorin plays it back down to Carl. Nesterov steps away from Zibanejad. And Nesterov brings it in to Keita Nesterov. Being bumped there by Hoffman. Carlson on it now. Comes Weirkosh across the line, just missed by Witkowski. You can hear the Ottawa bench yelling, get it deep to Patrick Weirkosh. But just over a, around a minute and a half at the time, trying to get at least one point and then go for the second one in overtime. Give away the, the score now as we get a whistle with 103 to go. And it's not good news for Ottawa fans as Zach Trotman has scored his first National Hockey League goal with 2.08 to go in the third period. There's with 3 2 Bruins. And now Morazic has gone to Detroit bench, so the extra skater will be on for the Red Wings. So now you're just fighting to stay alive. Yeah, the bottom line is. is even if you're scoreboard watching, to control what you can control, and that's two points in this game and on the line, and you're right there to go and achieve them. 31 27, the shots in favor of Ottawa. We're in the final minute of regulation here in Ottawa. Palat swings it back, Barbario. And Palat picks it up. Drops it back, rink wide pass, picked off by Carlson. Here comes Eric Carlson with it. Jumping ahead for Stone, that plays offside at the Tampa line. Let's see that goal. James Duffy show it to us. Yeah, usually first NHL goals are warm and fuzzy whether you cheer for the team or not, but Sens fans won't like rookie defenseman Zach Trotman. Uh, that's a weak one on Mrazek, and it's 3-2 Bruins. They're in the late stages there, under a minute to go in the third period. I hate to hear that, those words, a weak one, especially in the late <laughs> stages. It just makes Still my bunch you now. It, it makes my skin crawl. It makes me feel bad for goaltenders. <laughs> Carl trying to hold it. Lazar steps up, but Matt Carl reached around and knocked that away from him. it up for Pajot. Trying to center it, bouncing puck. Carl knocked it away, but it's knocked down by Carlson. Eric Carlson. Back in the corner for Condra. Takes the feed from Pajot, but can't tap it in. And now Carl back with it, dying seconds of the period. And Carlson couldn't knock the puck down at the line as Boyle comes in and doesn't get a shot away. So Ottawa will get one point at least, but the Sens need two. And we're heading for overtime here on Canadian Tire Senators Hockey on TSN. And we're back with it after this. So that news has not yet been flashed on the scoreboard here in Ottawa, but... I think people have the internet, though. That's yes. the... Uh... Handheld devices are, <laughs> are the enemy of the scoreboard operator here. Exactly. This is the, the challenge now. I mean... We see the nervous faces as this is a must extra point here in overtime. But as James mentioned, Detroit is now backing into this race in the East. They've had some struggles, Detroit. And Morazic's been terrific. Was the other night against Ottawa. And I don't know how things went for him tonight, but that's uh, obviously a a concern in Detroit, big picture with goaltending situation. Jimmy Howard has struggled coming back from that injury as well. So four on four in overtime here. And Zibanejad faces off against Filippola. And here's Eric Carlson. 
Top point getter among defensemen in the National Hockey League. Take that drop pass from Zibanejad. Centers it. And Carl knocks it down, wheels around quickly, and finds Callahan with that pass. But look at Eric Carlson. Just race back and take it away. That's the beauty of his game, whether he's in and out of position. He's such a great skater. He jumps back to be a difference maker defensively. And says he's not back to where he was before he had his Achilles injury. Well, <laughs> that's scary because he is a dominant player. I've, I've been very fortunate to do a lot of these games and watch him up close and live. And, man, he's here the real deal. Stamkos winds his way across. Finds Cooper with us later. Cooper working it on the overtime. Knocked away from him, and it's an odd man rush the other way for Ottawa. In comes Tony Cece. Cece trying to center it, knocked away from Stone, and back comes Stamkos quickly ahead. He finds Nesterov in, shoots, Hammond makes the stop and dives in for the rebound. It's Nikita Nesterov in a good chance on the feed from Stamkos. Andrew Hammond's going to make a, a real good save here to corral the rebound, but Cody Cece with the back check does a terrific job with the foot race with Steven Stamkos to not make this an odd man rush. Now Cece's up in the play, goes off of a, a leg of Strawman. Now Stamkos advances it. Shot's going to go towards the net, but Cece gets on his horse and gets inside position on Stamkos to not make that an odd man rush. That way Hammond can front the puck and make a, a solid save. Ottawa, a shootout winner in Detroit on Tuesday night. And now 3.40 to go in overtime here against the Tampa Bay Lightning. No! In comes Kucherov with it. Drops it back for Nesterov. Nesterov winds his way in. Nesterov from a sharp angle plays it off the side of the goal. Weirkosh tied up by Palat. And MacArthur tries to get away from Palat. Finally swings it back to Weirkosh as both teams are changing. Long lead pass into the skates of MacArthur. Trying to buy some time. He feeds it back for Pajo. That's picked off and back comes Drew out the other way for the Lightning. Jonathan Drew and across the line. Deals back. Paquette standing in front. Drew and shoots and Hammond makes the save on the screen shot and hangs on. So let's take a look at the up to the minute standings in the Eastern Conference. So now Boston with 93 tied with Detroit for that final playoff for that final division spot. We have not yet given Ottawa the point, so the Senators do have 89. For a chance to get to 90 with a win and either overtime or the shootout be within three of Detroit and Boston. Uh, nervous moments here, and like I said before, this is biggest point of the season. You have to have this, and probably going to take 96 to make the playoffs in the East. Yeah, I would think so. Turret. Drops it back for Ryan. Bobby Ryan centers it here. Turns with a chance. He shoots. Blocked by Carl. Kucherov plays it back. Topola. Across to Carl. And back to Valtteri Topola. Now pass it behind Callahan. Turris picks it up. In comes Turris with it. Drops it down to Ryan. Carlson lurking in there. But Matt Carl picks it off and finds Topola. Valtteri Coppola. Got to play that ahead for Cooper, who jumped in, picked off by Carlson. With Hoffman, Carlson in, shoot, push it back to stop. Two Senators trapped in deep. And here's Slater Cooper leading the rush for Tampa in overtime in his second National Hockey League game. He's been outstanding tonight, Gord. He's been all over. Feisty, as you pointed out, terrific skater. But that was a great save by Ben Bishop on Eric Carlson as he tried to beat him five-hole quick, and Bishop was able to... Get down quick enough and close up the wicket. Now Zibanejad knocks it down for Ottawa. Plays it back to Carlson. Across the weird cop. Carlson. Up ahead for Hoffman. Hoffman drops for Zibanejad. In is because Zibanejad swings it back in front against by everyone. And back is CC4 with us at 90 seconds to go in overtime. Great pace here for this overtime four-on-four four situation. And every time there's an overtime, the debate comes up. You want that three-on-three three as well. In comes Hoffman, watching and shoots against through to Bishop, and he's able to hang on with 1.14 to go in the third period. It was Mike Hoffman that was an option for Eric Carlson on the two-on-one situation. It's a turnover. Carlson head up. Hoffman tries
tries to bust to get in there and he rolls his wrist at the last second and Bishop closes it down and then this last save by Bishop, solid save, gets it in the chest and corrals it and wants to actually keep the play going, but the whistle goes. Now the Boyle against Turris on the faceoff. And Carlson stays out there as well for Ottawa. Turris wins the draw cleanly back to Stone. Here's Carlson with it. Carlson shoots it with just fly. Now Palat racing to it for Tampa. Andre Palat along with Brian Boyle. In comes Palat, steaming in, taking a shot away. CC picks it up the final minute of OT. CC banks it there for Carlson. CC chops it across for Turris. He's got Stone with him. In comes Turris for Stone. That's swatted away by Nesterov. Here comes Palat along with Kucherov. Kucherov. Heels back, has a look. Drops it back for Nesterov. Nesterov's long shot. Tipped it wide of the goal with Carlson. Chops it there for Weirkosh, ahead to Stone. Stone for Turret. Across he goes to Weirkosh. 25 seconds left in overtime. Ottawa's changing Weirkosh, centers it. Here's Stone with it now. Stone plays it rink wide. Drops it back, Weirkosh, in shoots. to wait for traffic in front of the net before he lets that shot go. Mark Stone does a terrific job of finding him through that lane, but it's all about how Weirkosh has the presence of mind to wait for people to get to help him out to get in front of Ben Bishop. If he fires that initially off the pass, Ben Bishop makes an easy save because he sees it. Turris initially through the neutral zone is going to pop it wide and go for the change. Weirkosh takes some contact, throws it back. Now watch Mark Stone get it to him. Weirkosh waits, no hesitation. Now he has that net front presence. And you see the look on his face as he delivers a huge win for the Ottawa Senators. And again, coming across the screen is Clark MacArthur. Ben Bishop doesn't get a clean look at it as it goes between the... The blocker and the body of Ben Bishop with 16.9 seconds left, and the Senators still have life with their playoff opportunity. Patrick Weirkosh had one goal in his last 48 games. He was a healthy scratch on Sunday, but he's got the overtime winner, one of the biggest goals of the season for the Ottawa Senators. He's star number two, and Andrew Hammond becomes the first goaltender in National Hockey League history to win 16 of his first 18 starts. Ben Bishop, the former senator, is star number three. So Ottawa, still within reach of that last playoff spot in the Eastern Conference.